I'm Jim Moyer. I'm the Associate Dean for Research in the College of Agriculture, Human and Natural Resource Sciences at Washington State University. And it's my pleasure to welcome you this morning to the, uh, the second day of the, the, the Direct Seed Conference. It is a, a pleasure to be here. As, as most of you know, I'm relatively new to WSU, but it's great to be back in the, the Pacific Northwest. And this particular group is one that uh, I enjoy uh, uh, the program particularly well because uh, so much of the program is relevant to the area where I grew up in southeastern Washington, and there's a lot of history there. So um, I have one uh, housekeeping announcement, and that is that the uh, the sign-up sheet for the CCA continuing education credits are available in the back of the room. And uh, remember that there is a place to sign in as well as to sign out in order to uh, obtain those credits. So the, the topic, uh, in terms of the, a little introduction for the, uh, the, the session this morning, um, the, the topic that uh, I was asked to talk about was soil research the new frontier. I think um, as I'm going to, uh, whoops, there we go. Um, we talk about soil as the new frontier, but in, in fact, as everyone knows, it's, the soil has, has been around from the beginning of time, and it's, it's fundamental to all of uh, everything we do and everything that's been done in, in growing food to feed uh, the growing population on the planet. But, but I think what is new is with the rapidly evolving um, technology, the uh, at attention that soil is receiving, it does provide us with opportunities. And I think in that context, it really is a, a new frontier. Um, it, here in the, the Pacific Northwest, um, the STEEP program and then, and then the REACH program um, have, have been going on now for uh, close to, well, between 30 and 40 years. Um, it's, a, it's a deep history in, in attention to soil. Uh, the the uh, CSANR Center um, and the activities that they have, have coordinated together with the, uh, all the activities at WSU on the main campus. Uh, soil is a, is a big deal for us at, at WSU. It's a, it's a priority. I'm going to talk to you about some of the, some of the things that, uh, that we're doing or, or going to do, new opportunities uh, to support this new frontier. Um, I, the, uh, personally, I think uh, some of you, maybe many of you know that I grew up on a farm in southeastern Washington. And, and I can remember the days when, um, before harvest, you, you'd have to go out and fill in the holes uh, because some of the erosion was such that uh, you could drive a tractor into some of those, those holes. And, and now we're at a point in time where um, not only is there, there not that, that level of erosion, it's almost non-existent, and many of those ditches that formed uh, have fill, completely filled in. And so I, I think it's, it's been a, a real positive thing for me personally to see how the stewardship of the land has changed over the last 40 to 50 years, at least in the, the area that I, that I grew up. Um, I, can, I, I can remember that the, when the um, strip, strip cropping came into fashion, uh, the controversies over trashy summer follow, as it was called, not a very flattering name for something that worked quite well. Um, a lot of these advances, I think, were, were, were and are due to a lot of the, some of the individuals who are here in this room and uh, for their, their pioneering effects. The partnership that they formed with WSU, um, some of the ideas came from uh, from the scientists that uh, work at WSU, but a lot of it to be converted into practice, it's due to this special partnership that the scientists at WSU have developed together with 
um, that all of you, the individuals that are involved on a day-to-day -day basis, and rely upon your, your, your livelihood. But some of the things, briefly, some of the things that are really exciting um, on the horizon. Over the last year, uh, the, the, uh, the efforts around the LTAR, or the Long-Term Agroecosystem Research Facility, that's located on the Cook Farm near WSU. This is a USDA uh, uh, sponsored program. It is administered out of the uh, USDA ARS uh, in the Northwest Agroecosystem Research Unit. Um, but it is a consortium and it is, it, is the, it is the continuation or the next generation of the STEEP and the REACH programs. Um, again, it's a collaborate, it'll be a collaborative effort. Although it's focused and centered on, and the, the official site is on the Cook Farm, uh, the intention is to broaden the, the scope of that program to include all of, um, or nearly all of the rain fed cropping systems in the, in the Pacific Northwest. Um, it will be a, 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 a very intense, um, effort. Uh, USDA has made a significant financial uh, uh, commitment to support this facility with uh, monitoring uh, sensor with sensors, with the, the equipment to do that, the data storage, um, all of the things that are needed, and, and then I believe also uh, personnel to, to help with this. So it's a, it's a, it's a tremendous uh, opportunity. It, it is, as I said, it's, it's coordinated out of our, with our partners, USDA ARS. Um, sometimes I mentioned WSU scientists, that partnership is, is so close that uh, I, I tend to think of the ARS scientists and our partners as, as WSU faculty. Um, this is, a, this is a good thing. Uh, sometimes their administrators think that we, we uh, covet them a little bit too much. But it is, it is a great uh, relationship that we have with ARS. We, we work seamlessly together. And this program here is, is going to go a long way towards taking us to the next generation. So this is a... the, the the objectives of the LTAR are, as it says, it's the ecosystem. It is looking at the, the soil and the structure um, and other components in the rain-fed cropping systems at the, really at the ecosystem level. We have a lot of other research that's going on, and I want to I give you one more example. And, and this is at the, the micro level. This is at the component level of dissecting the elements, what's going on in the soil that is, that, that is responsible for observations. Um, if you're in the, the rain-fed uh, wheat growing area, uh, particularly, and, well, and also uh, would be in the irrigated land, um, uh, Rhizoctonia uh, has been a, a problem for many years, but it, there, the observation was made that um, in, in some soils, after uh, repeated um, cropping of, of wheat and in certain systems, there was a, a, uh, a, there was a change in the response of wheat varieties in that the soils seemed to be suppressive. Or, or had developed the capacity to suppress uh, the level of disease. Um, and so there's a, a research uh, being conducted by uh, Scott Holbert in the Department of Plant Pathology that is uh, investigating, um, he along with colleagues, um, are in investigating how these suppressive soils uh, develop. And one of the tools that they are now able to use is um, being able to sequence and document, uh, generate the DNA sequence of all the organisms or a large proportion of the, the microbial population that exists in um, the, the soil. And 
This is now uh, sufficiently r routine that it's, it's able to, to uh, generate a meaningful sequence from a large proportion of the microbes that are in the soil and then be able to compare shifts uh, with various um, cropping, cropping systems. And a little, little bit difficult uh, for me to point to this from here, but what we have here in this slide, it's a little bit dense, but what we have here is in, uh, along the bottom are, is a the, uh, the designation for a large number of, of microbes that have been uh, identified as being of interest, and each one of these uh, represents a single microbe, and then uh, here are the, the different treatments across here, and then these bars represent the, 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 the frequency or the pre relative presence of, of the various uh, microbes here. And what you can see designated by the arrows here are differences so that occur when you have a, a different pattern or different cropping system a different rotation, and these differences occur not only in large differences in the cropping systems, but they also now are able to detect different varieties of wheat also have a significant impact on the, the, uh, on the, the microbial population. And then the, the goal is to identify which one of these changes is responsible for the suppressive soils, isolate that, and then to be able to focus on that specific uh, part of the microbial population in the soil to manage uh, this particular disease. And once, so this would be, uh, this would amount to having a diagnostic test that one could ultimately use to follow uh, the impact of a particular crop rotation uh, on rhizoctonia and down to the variety level so that it, in, in, in future years at some point one will be able to make very, uh, this will figure into your variety selection, not just crop rotation in terms of, of wheat and lentils for example, but in actually the varieties that one might choose within each of these um, crops in your particular location. So we have, we have some research, there's research going on at the ecosystem level, this, uh, in cropping systems. There's also um, research going on at the component level, at the molecular level. And the soils that research at WSU uh, we are uh, a center of, of, uh, of excellence in the, not, a, not as a, a actual center, but in fact the level of expertise that we have in soils at WSU, uh, in the, the crop and soils departments, but the work that's going on with cooperators in departments like plant pathology, soilborne insects and entomology, in, in other departments, uh, we have a critical mass of scientists working in soils. And this, what really makes WSU special, though, is our partnership with ARS. There are uh, ARS scientists um, in each of these departments, um, certainly uh, crop science and plant pathology that are involved in soils, and that they work together seamlessly on these projects. And it really makes, it gives WSU a, a competitive advantage when it comes to participating in large programs. And in fact, that's one of the reasons that the LTAR, LTAR, was cited at WSU. Um, there's only, um, initially, there were only about 12 of these nationally, and this is the only one that deals exclusively with cropping systems. Most of them deal with range and forest. This was, this was a special, um, a special designation for WSU. Uh, recently, we've, we've added to our capacity with uh, hires in soil microbiology, root biology, and bioinformatics and genomics. 
And I can tell you that soils positions figure prominently um, in our hiring plan going forward. So at WSU, uh, soil is, uh, is, is right now is a major priority and uh, we're, we're looking forward to providing leadership uh, and support of um, all of the activities that, uh, that you were in, involved in. Thank you.